police text me um, saying your your daughter is saved because she's in the company of an individual who turned out to be the groomer. And I was telling the police that this is a groomer and they left her there. They left her in the property. And she was 14 then. Hello and welcome back to Crime Suspect. Each week we unravel some of the UK's most prolific crimes as well as providing in-depth analysis on the criminality that plagues our nation. On the show today, children left at the mercy of grooming gangs. Hundreds of vulnerable girls were exploited by Asian gang members and now, after the release of findings from a six-year independent review, have the police really learned the lessons of the Rochdale grooming scandal? Next up, we'll be bringing you the best and worst of policing with our good cop, bad cop. And finally, it's your chance to book a crook as we show you this week's wanted criminals. Joining me for all of this today is the president of the Association of Child Abuse Lawyers, Peter Garsden. Marlon West, whose daughter was exploited by gangs in Manchester, and last but by no means least, Maggie Oliver, former detective constable with Greater Manchester Police, who, in order to raise the concerns, to tell the truth and get the word out there, resigned at huge cost and is now the founder of the Maggie Oliver Foundation. Thank you all very much for being here. Now, you have the right to remain watching. This is Crime Suspect. <laughs> Hundreds of vulnerable young girls were left at the mercy of paedophile grooming gangs for years in Rochdale because of an inadequate response by Greater Manchester Police and Council bosses. Those were the findings from a damning 173-page review which covers the years from 2004 to 2013 and identifies 96 men that are still deemed as a potential risk to children, most of whom are yet to be prosecuted. Girls as young as 12 were given alcohol and drugs and raped in rooms above takeaway shops. But despite the repeated efforts of a brave few to alert the relevant authorities, too many in positions of power were either unwilling or unable to intervene. Maggie, you've highlighted the failings of the systems. What were those failings? The main failing, Peter, was that those at the top of the police and social services made the deliberate decision that they were not going to put resources into investigating and prosecuting these paedophiles. Um, now, people often say, what were the reasons for that? I think it's a real complex web um, of reasons. But for me, no reason is justified. Because, you know, as a police officer, when you take your oath of attestation, you promise to uphold the law, to protect the vulnerable, um, and to do that to the very best of your ability. And, and I was just a detective. And yet, for the whole span of that time, from 2004 to the end of 2012, when I resigned, I was seeing repeated failures towards children who were the most vulnerable, trying to get the chief constable at the time, Peter Fowler, to listen. I went to him personally. He wouldn't meet me. Um, and this report makes it very clear that these were systemic failures, but that, the, that actually there were d individuals behind those decisions not to put adequate resources in. So I'm not blaming individual police officers on the ground. I am blaming those at the top who make decisions based on resources and actually based on their opinion that these children didn't deserve to be protected. And that is abhorrent, it is unlawful, and I want to see heads roll for those decisions and accountability for one of those people, at least at the top of policing, at the top of social services and councils who deliberately turned away from these children. Now, we've spoken in the past tense, haven't we? Marlon, 
These concerns are ongoing. This report wasn't the end of a chapter that we can neatly put away because your daughter has very recently been the subject of this grooming. Tell me about that, Correct. please. So in 2022, December, so just over 12 months ago, um, my daughter was found in a property in Rochdale with men um, and Class A drugs. Um, and she'd been there for about two weeks. So if there's improvements in Rochdale, how come my daughter was found there? And we don't even live in the area. So what happened when the police went into these premises and found your daughter with these men with the drugs? So my daughter was arrested and she was bailed on intent to supply Class A drugs. She didn't have any of these drugs on her. The other men had the drugs on her, on them. Not, not one individual's ever been charged. And your daughter had gone missing on a number of occasions when she was much younger. So, um, she went missing, or I reported her missing, 56 times. On social services, probably a sim similar number. So she was constantly going missing. Was your daughter raped, unlawfully imprisoned, sexually assaulted by men when she went missing on those occasions? Absolutely, yes. Repeatedly? Repeatedly. Has anybody stood trial for those kind of offences? Not one. Did your daughter ever get strip searched by the police? So, yeah, um, she was strip searched um, when she was about 14. Um, and again, I don't think that's, it weren't perverse in any, any way. This was purely down to um, punishment to teach her a lesson. Um, when it was challenged, they said she was a suicide risk. What Scarlett came back with, because she's quite astute, well, if that's the case then, why did you leave me bra on? Maggie, I guess these kind of tales are all too <coughs> sickeningly familiar to you. And this is a very recent case. Yeah, I mean, Marlon came to the Foundation for help because his cries for help were falling on deaf ears. And I am not saying that these are not really difficult cases to investigate and prosecute. They are. But all too often what we see, what I see in the Foundation today, not 10 years ago, are that um, victims themselves are criminalised, as Marlon has just said. They, they are a very easy target. And if they can discredit a victim, it means that all the abuse and the, the, the complex gangs that are exploiting children escape prosecution and by strip searching and intimidating a child what happens is that child goes into themselves and they won't share evidence with the police to allow them to prosecute so we need a complete overhaul of the system that gives officers good officers the time to gain the trust of these children and when you know that less than two percent of even reported sexual crimes ever reach court. That is 98 in 100 that don't. And that's not including the ones that aren't reported. And that means that abusers have really got a carte blanche to abuse more children. Peter, organisations trying to protect themselves when they haven't done their job properly. Is that a familiar kind of refrain to you and fellow lawyers? Well, I've been dealing with child abuse for the last 30 years. Uh, and. I've lost count of the number of times when it's quite obvious that the organisation concerned knew what was going on, but did their best to cover up exactly what had happened. Um, you, you may well be familiar with the uh, proposed criminal offence of mandatory reporting. Um, that is a crime to not report abuse when you know or suspect that it has gone on. Uh, I dealt with a lot of children's home cases um, back in the 1990s and the 2000s, repeated children in care would complain about abuse. They would be accused of being liars because they were children in care and therefore didn't know the difference between truth and lies. Their complaints would be ignored by the person in the home, then by the police when they were brought back from, from running away, 
and, and thirdly by their social worker. So yes, organisations turning a blind eye is very familiar to me. So the investigation of these crimes is much more labour intensive for the police than other crimes because they have to go and seek out the evidence. I mean, this was the mistake they made uh, in, in this report. They were waiting for victims to come forward to report crimes because they thought they should be reactive rather than proactive, whereas actually they need to be proactive and they need to investigate when they find one crime, realise that there are many others and look for them. That's a quite brilliant point. Um, Maggie, so we've heard about these regions, these areas, but is it a nationwide issue? It, it, it absolutely is, Peter. Um, you know, at the Maggie Oliver Foundation, we're, we've, in the last five years, we've now supported over 4,000 victims from all over the country. Um, and it, it's a system that doesn't work. The, the complaint system is completely unfit for purpose and leaves one child on their own to fight an organisation and abusers who are extremely sophisticated. And those children are easy to dismiss, easy to blame, easy to write off. It used to be making a lifestyle choice. We need a complete culture shift. And that, for me, comes from the top, you know? Utterly repugnant lifestyle choices, like anybody takes being groomed and raped as a lifestyle choice. Um, Marlon, with your daughter, did the police ever say, do you know any other children that are being groomed? Do you know any other children to whom this is happening? No, they never asked once. They wouldn't even take intelligence from me because I'm a parent. So when I'm talking intel intelligence, CCTV of vehicles, where you can clearly see the reg plates, clicked in my daughter. Um, on another occasion, um, I, I did give them details of where she was staying, um, and the police text me um, saying, your, your daughter is safe because she's in the company of an individual who turned out to be the groomer. And I was telling the police that this is a groomer, and they left her there. They left her in the property. And she was 14 then. 14 14. Years so she wasn't going to school because she was missing. And they left her there, I think it was about a week, in this property with the groomer. And they text me with the person's name. Were there threats made to your daughter? Were, were, was the use of videos mentioned? Yeah, so the, there was threats. Um, there was th um, threats to Scarlett, but there was also threats to me. Um, on one occasion of a different individual, because there's a number of groomers and the there's a network, um, he sent um, a video to Scarlett shooting a gun out of a car and said, if you don't meet me, then I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do to your dad. I telephoned the police and they did put me through to um, a sergeant and he was laughing and joking with me on the phone going, so he's driving the car and shooting at the same time. And just gently taking the mech, I said, well, one of two things will happen. Either I'll get shot, but if he turns up at the property, I'm going to defend myself. Eventually the police turned up, they watched the video, and they did take it very serious and put us into... Witness protection? Witness protection, yes. Yeah. Uh, just for a couple of days. And um, then when they did raid his property, they found... 30 mobile phones, a cannabis grow, um, and two revolvers. Peter, do the police go for the, the easy win with these cases? Because this is what I seem to be hearing. They find a gun, they'll charge them with that. They find drugs, they'll charge them with that. Interview in depth a child victim and then do a thorough complex investigation into a number of offenders... They're not so keen to do that. Well, no, they, they want to find enough evidence to get a prosecution. If it's not the right prosecution or an easy option, then often that is the route taken. Because what you have to remember is, in order to prosecute these types of crimes, you're looking at conspiracy uh, often and people being joined together in a plan to exploit children. And that's far more difficult to prosecute than the simple offences of possession of a knife, possession of... Indecent images of children is often 
uh, an option gone for where, for example, there's concern that the, the, the witness isn't going to come up to proof that the witness might not give the right evidence. That isn't right. They should explore further, but that's more labour intensive and that takes a lot more effort and is a lot more risky. So, it, like Maggie says, it's got to come from the top that there is a diktat uh, and, and the policeman has to realise this isn't just one offence. This will be a series of offence, acting, men acting in concert uh, together with a view to exploiting children. And it'll be complex and there needs to be some experienced detectives perhaps to apply their minds yes. to what would be a very challenging investigation. Yes, but that's what has to happen to root out the problem. And that's what didn't happen in Rochdale. They looked at these cases. The, the, the CPS code was different. Keir Starmer rewrote it to say you should not look at the victim but look at evidence to support the victim. That was about 2013 when all this blew up uh, because the previous code was inappropriate. Now they will look at, in a different way because the code has changed, evidence support. So, you know, when it's just one offence, are there going to be others and should we investigate proactively? Maggie, you're not the only Greater Manchester police detective to come forward and tell the truth. Another courageous woman who's going by the name of Lucy did exactly that in the last few days. And essentially, Lucy said, it's happening again. It's still happening. There are not the resources. Young, inexperienced detectives are overworked. And Lucy's allegations were put to Greater Manchester Police and they made a response which includes the following lines. It is absolutely accurate to say that the situation is much different to Greater Manchester Police's approach in the past. What would you say to that? If I had a pound for every time I've heard that, I would be a millionaire. Um, what I would say is that Lucy came to me within the past month. Um, she had been, she could have been me 12 years ago. After seven years of still out there abusing God knows how many children. So I have heard, that to me is another excuse. It's saying the things that happened in the past can't happen today. Well, I am saying 150%, they absolutely are. And unless we get senior officers to acknowledge that we need change, we are just going to be in the same place in 10 years' time saying, oh, well, this couldn't happen now. It is happening. Marlon's daughter is an example. And if, you know, speaking in a, in a live press conference where I said to the chief constable, when he said, as surely as night follows day, this couldn't happen today. Well, I said, yes, it can. And yes, it is. And I know an officer who was just resigned who could have been me. And she is one of many. I spoke to an officer on Sunday who... Had he, he tried to commit suicide last year. His partner at work actually died because he was carrying a workload that was destroying him. This is not about individual officers. Yes, there are good and bad. There are lazy and there are incompetent. But there are no experienced detectives. The people are leaving in their droves. And whilst chief constables and senior officers say everything's OK, nothing will change. They have to step up and they have to say it how it, how it is. And that's what we need, Peter. Thank you all very much for a wonderful discussion. We approached Greater Manchester Police for comment and a spokesperson said... It remains to be a matter of profound regret that victims of child sexual exploitation in Rochdale in the early 2000s were failed by Greater Manchester Police. To them, I apologise. I also recognise the plight of Maggie Oliver and Sarah Robotham who advocated for victims and survivors when no one else did, and ultimately enabled the review and publication of this report. Right, moving on to this week's Cop Watch. Good cop this week, or should I say good boy, with a number of arrests under his harness, is Vinny, the police dog, who caught a man that broke into Dobby's garden centre in White. The opportunistic burglar attempted to take charity tins from the tills and other items, but was caught by Vinny and his handler and was later sentenced to a year in prison after previously pleading guilty to burglary and possession of a Class B drug. Bad cop. And proving this is one rotten apple that's not above the law is former constable Kia 
Pulford Stone, who resigned before she could be sacked. Pulford Stone was convicted of assault and criminal damage after two separate incidents which took place at an address in Wigan. Despite avoiding the sack, action has been taken by the force to add her name to the College of Policing's barred list, prohibiting the ex-copper from working in any policing role in the UK. All right, it's time for the part of the show where we bring you the mugs of thugs who are terrorising our streets. But firstly, some success. Following one of our recent appeals, Ben Huntley was located and charged with grievous bodily harm and possession of a bladed article after an assault in a pub in Islington left a man with life-changing facial injuries. Thanks to everyone who shared our appeal or called him with information. Now, moving on to this week's Wanted. First up is this suspect. Police are appealing for information about Jack Crawley, who is wanted on suspicion of attempted murder of a man in York. Crawley is described as white, six foot three inches tall, of proportionate build with very short hair and short facial hair. Next, CCTV footage has been released of a man officers wish to speak to in connection with a serious sexual assault in Broughton. The victim, a teenage girl, was approached by a man as she entered an alleyway between Howe Street and Back Howe Street. Lastly, do you recognise these men? Detectives investigating an attack on a man with a metal pole in Newham are releasing images of two men they would like to identify. The victim was found with a head injury outside the Queen's Pub in Green Street. If you think you know or have seen any of these crooks, get in touch anonymously with Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. Many thanks to Peter, Marlon and Maggie. Be sure to leave us a comment, like and subscribe and we'll be back next week for more Crime Suspects. Crime Suspects.